everybody. I'm Chad Eckert. That is not Eric Martins, but this is the Fantasy Golf Pod. Follow us on Twitter at Fantasy Golf Pod, and now we're on iTunes too. Tonight, I have the nicest guy in the DFS industry, Joe Nicely. Hey, man. How are you? What's up, dude? That can't be your real name, is it? It is. It is. I, I get a lot of you get a lot of flack for that, but it is my real name. That's hilarious. That's a good name. Hey, cheers <laughs> to you, dude. Thanks for coming on. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. I'm, uh, I'm here with you. Yeah, I see that Tennessee Vols can koozie. What do you got there? You got, you're in Tennessee. You're in Knoxville with that accent, mm-hmm. aren't you? I'm right here in Big Orange Country. I am in Knoxville. Yeah. So yeah. You're, uh, are you a big Peyton Manning guy, or were you a little after that? Um, yeah, I love Peyton. Uh, he yeah. was, he was, his last year was my junior year of high school. And then the next year, my senior year of high school, we won the national championship. So, yeah, big Peyton guy. That's brilliant. Okay, beautiful. So, Joe Nicely is at Joe Nicely on Twitter. You can find him there. He is the lead editor for Roto Baller. Um, I am doing my best to learn about people in the industry, Joe, and I'm starting to get, you know, back to the basics here. It's quarantine. We're trying to figure out what we're doing with our lives. Do you have stuff going on? Are you busy? Are you happy to be in quarantine or are you stuck with family like me? I got two young kids that are driving me insane. <laughs> I've got one little one. Um, in Tennessee, it's not been that bad. We're actually kind of, we're kind of back to normal now. Um, for the a big part of April, we were kind of shelter in place, I guess. Um, but pretty much since May 1st, it's, it's been back to kind of business as usual here. Okay. So I think I'm doing better than a lot of people. You got the Roto Baller sign from the DFS Open, it looks like. Do yeah. you do this full-time? Is this your full-time gig, or what do you do for real in real life? No, I don't. I own my own business. Um, I have for almost 10 years, but I've been with Roto Baller since uh, 2018. So, I guess in this business, that's a pretty long time. You don't, uh, you don't want to plug your own business? Do you need to? Or no? <laughs> no, I'm good. Okay. I'm going to plug Roto Baller a little bit, though, because they've been okay. so good to me. So, we'll, we'll get, definitely get to, get to that, I hope. Tell me about Roto Baller. This is the time. Tell me, what is it, and why do we need to know about this? Um, it's just a big, big site, totally dedicated to fantasy sports, uh, football, baseball, basketball, um, of course, golf now. Um, got hockey, MMA. They got everything over there. Um, but they really got golf going when I came on a couple of years ago in 2018. Um, they, were, they had one guy doing a golf article. And uh, they wanted to cover the Masters in 2018. So they kind of put out a thing on Twitter to uh, hire some riders to cover, just do some player news for the Masters. And I just randomly saw it on Twitter and applied and kind of went from there. So is this your background then? Do you go to college for writing or why are you writing? Oh, just so I kind of always enjoyed it. Um, It's something I enjoyed and I've always loved golf, kind of had a fascination with golf and um, saw that and just thought, why not, you know, um, and it just kind of grew from there. Well, did you play golf? Are you a golfer? What's your handicap? I try to be a golfer. <laughs> I'm terrible. I, I didn't, uh, I didn't grow up playing. I got into it late. Um, I guess I probably first played when I was like 17 or 18. So I got a Yeah. You need to get into it when you're like five, your dad needs to make yeah. basically tiger woods you and force you onto the range or else you're kind of screwed, which my dad didn't, and I was a little angry, but I got myself into it. And then once you get into the business world, too, and you can golf, then you get those outings with your boss, then you get hooked up, days in the afternoon off. It's great. So you got to be a yeah. golfer. You got to learn early, too. Yeah, you do. And, and I came from a little bitty town, and there was uh, basketball, baseball, and football, <laughs> and that's it. There were no golf teams, nothing. Um, so I, I didn't really get a chance to get into it until I was a teenager and kind of got into it then. Then when I was in college um, at UT, I got a part-time job selling golf equipment. There was a kind of mom and pop shop, kind of like Dick's Sporting Goods. Um, So I worked in the golf department there and kind of got the equipment bug and started playing a lot. And uh, one thing led to another and I've just always kind of, kind of been in and out of it. Um, Okay. What about your background in fantasy sports? Where did you get into that? Are you like me? Were you had your friends, did it uh, in middle school where there was no even computers yet, and I was putting stuff on lockers. 
Are you doing? I don't go that far back. <laughs> I don't go that far back with it. I probably, st- I guess, I started playing fantasy just like regular fantasy leagues in college, um, fantasy football, and um, started having a pretty competitive league with my friends maybe eight, ten years ago. And uh, we do that every year still. But I guess I got into uh, DFS probably around 2016. Um, I think that's when I started out playing football, I remember. Um, basically signed up DraftKings for that. Um, then started dabbling golf. And when I first started playing golf, I guess it's probably 2016. And I hated it because you put your lineup in. And you have to wait for four days before you know what's going to happen. So I absolutely hated it. And now it, it wasn't really daily. It was no, no, still that, weekly. No, that's like it still is week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, yeah, it switched. The, yeah, now I love the sweat, like on Fridays. That's the yeah. best part. And then if you're in the mix on Sunday, you love it. So everything I hated then, I love now. But I. Uh, I started playing in 2016, and I guess the 2017 Masters, um, I had a top 25 in the Millie Maker. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I bet Sergio, he won that year. Mm-hmm. And I had the top 25, so that kind of got me going in golf, kind of gave me the golf bug. Okay. Um, before we talk about your process during the week, there's a part of the week that is known as the moment to tinker. And you are a self-proclaimed tinkerer. I Tell am. us about this. It's Why are horrible. you tinkering? What is up with it's that, horrible. dude? It's horrible. Oh I gosh. know Wait. to do it, but I do it anyway. <laughs> That's, I think, like, what, what qualifies as like a problem when you know you shouldn't, but you do. Well, uh, yeah, man, what's I'll your t- biggest problem, though? Are you tinkering too much at the last second? Are you always overthinking? Are you doing a little overthink? I think so. Uh, <laughs> it's not as bad as it used to be. I have got better. Okay. But you know, when, you, when you dive in as much as I do every week and you've got, like, so much stuff going through your head, it's hard to just tune it out and finally say, here's the, here's the guys. This is where I'm going. You know, you start yeah. thinking about, well, this guy's hitting his irons good or this guy's – he might putt well this week, so you you want to change stuff. But I try. What to has fight. helped you? What has made you not so bad at tinkering? You're saying you're getting better. Uh, what advice would you have for someone who doesn't want to tinker? Because I I <laughs> tend to fall into this. You get that like late start, those California yeah. times those, where you're those, thinking, oh gosh, I wake up, I got two hours. <laughs> yeah, when you got all morning to mess with it, those are the worst. Uh, you just gotta you just gotta make yourself not do it. There's I don't guess there's a good good trick to it other than to tell yourself you know trust your process trust your research um trust what you've done throughout the week don't change it late okay well i'll ask you then has tinkering ever paid off Uh, a couple times a couple times but for the most part it doesn't i found out it's better (laughs) to to, to just go what you've already got go with what you've already got well has has it ever led to a mega profit are you do you have a story that you go Hey, listen, I love this DFS stuff. I made 25 or I made $400 off 25 cents. Do you have a mega profit GPP? I've had a lot of, I've had a lot of, I've been fortunate. I've had a lot of good caches. Um, I've not had just like the huge life changing cash, which is what everybody wants, right? But um, I hadn't had Well, do you go for that? Because I personally don't. I play 20 lineups in the short game and I'm going for a thousand bucks. I'm not going for a million bucks. I've learned I can't get that million dollar payout. I'm not good at those kind of contests. Are you going for the Millie Maker? Are you playing in those? Um, I'm actually, I'm actually with you. I've went through since I've been playing. I've I've went through different. I guess trying to find what my comfort level is, what I feel like I'm good at, and I think everybody has a style that you need to stick with. And I found out that's just not my thing, man. I'm not going to play enough of those random dudes. Um, to win like the three dollar that's got however many hundred thousand in it. Um, so I've learned um, I play single entry stuff, three max stuff. I play a little bit higher entry with smaller fields. Um, yep. So that kind of knocks your chances down of of grabbing like a huge score. Or now, like in the majors, I'll play the milli and I'll put, you know, multiple lineups in there. But And I've tried max entry, but it's just, just not for me. Um, I definitely respect those guys that do it. 
um, cause I, I think it's definitely a skill. Um, but it's just not for me. There's too much. So you're not using 150 lineup generators. No, no, I have before. Um, I've tinkered with it, but it's, I found out it's just not me. Um, like I said, I think it's a different skill set. Those guys that do it are really good at it. Um, and I respect what they do, but it's, it's just not for me. I found my comfort level is, I always say with the exception of the majors, because I'll step it up a little bit. You know, I'll everyone fire, does. Yeah, I'll fire some at the million and stuff, but mm -hmm. um, I'm I will usually never have more than twenty lineups going. That would be a lot. Um, okay, so in a twenty lineup week, typically, yeah. how many players are you using in your player pool? My player pool is probably smaller than what a lot of guys use. Um, people call it different things. Um, I like to find a core. I write, a, write an article for Rotoballer on Wednesdays called a core four. Um, and that's kind of what I do. I like to find a core of usually four, um, but it can change a little bit, but the article's core four. Um, but I like to find a core and I like to build around those guys. Um, people call it different things, but I'll try to find my core of four to six guys. Um, I'll, usually, I'll usually find the lineup that I like the best and I'll throw it in something, you know, like, I'll put it in the 150 um, or the 222 or 333 or something like that. And then I'll build some different variations of that lineup, put it in smaller, you know, smaller entry fee. Um, so I'm usually working with around 20 guys, 25 guys. Okay. Um, that's what I like to, what I like to do. The core four, what is a criteria for this core four? How do you come up with – do you open DraftKings, you see the names, and you're just like, whoa, that guy's coming at me. I'm like, or do you go through this serious research, and then by Tuesday afternoon you figure this stuff yeah, out? What's your it's, process? It's different. I mean, every time it's different. I usually start – I mean, I guess I probably start earlier than most because I've got a couple articles, you know, that I have to have posted earlier in the week. Um, I do a, a course history article article called horse for the course and I usually post it on Monday um, so usually I'm looking the fields are finalized on Friday evening um, I'll usually look and see who's in the field for the next week on Friday um, and just kind of get a feel for it um, then over the weekend I'll start um, digging into course history um, who's played well there um, what works there at that course, what, what skill is important. And I'll start looking at the guys in the field, try to kind of start narrow, narrowing it down. Um, then usually Sunday evening, Monday morning, I'll finish up the uh, horse for the course um, with the course history guys. And then by usually Tuesday evening, um, early Wednesday morning, I've got it narrowed down for the core four. Cool. Yeah. Do you use Roto Baller for your research or where are you getting this research? Um, I do. I do. We've, uh, this is our first year with some really awesome tools. We've got a, uh, we started a new premium program um, and we've got a research station and it's got, it's kind of one stop shop and everything's there. It's got course history, it's got recent form, it's got strokes gain, it's got everything. So I use that a ton. Um, of course, I use Fantasy National. Um, mm -hmm. th those guys are great, Moose and those guys. And uh, we, we have a partnership with them for several years. Um, they're awesome. Um, listen to you guys, uh, Bagels, Kenny Kim, Jeff and Pat, you know, mm -hmm. all those guys. I just try to consume as much as I can throughout the week. Um, so there's just, you know, a lot of different things that I use to get there. Last thing, though, are you factoring ownership? Ownership is tricky. <laughs> that is one of those things that, that I guess there's, there's always debate around. We all know it's important, but we don't know how important it is or how we should use it, right? So um, my thing is I try to be mindful of ownership, but I don't let it dictate what I'm doing. Um, if, if I go through my research process and – I, there's a guy that I asked, Patrick Reed. I hate him this week, um, but I see he's going to be 2% on. Um, it's tempting to take advantage of that ownership, but I usually won't let myself do that because I have in the past and it seems to never work out. Hmm. And if, I, if, I've, if I've got two guys that I feel are really close and one's ownership is going to be noticeably less, um, sometimes I'll let ownership dictate that. 
Um, and but you're not he, fading a guy in the 10K range because he's owned by 20% of the field, right? No, not if I lock him. Um, right. If I lock him, I'm playing him at 20%. But if there's a guy in like the $6,600 range that's getting up to the 15%, are you getting more weary about mm. playing a guy like that, knowing yeah, the variance in golf? Cheap talk. Um, cheap talk, I will kind of kind of lean towards wanting to fade. Um, you know, if to me, there's a big difference between – a guy down there, um, he's going to be more more volatile anyway, just by nature, than say like a Rory's at twenty percent or, or Brooks or whatever, um, versus a guy that's down there like seven k or or less. Um, those guys are just more volatile anyway. So, I mean, I definitely think there's some uh, there's some upside to fading those guys that get chalky down there, and it happens. I mean, a lot of times guys will get talked up through the week, and it's a guy that. You know, maybe Monday you never think is gonna gonna be huge on, but like he's on every podcast, he's in every article, and next thing you know, he's like twenty percent. So uh, yeah, there's definitely some advantages to fade those kind of guys. So you're not only doing just golf; you've got some NFL stuff. You're doing other things, right? You're writing. You're a member of the Fantasy Sports Writers of America. I am. Yeah, I am. I, I do a little bit of football, uh, mostly DFS. Um, mostly DFS, but man, golf's my passion. I, I don't get me wrong; I love football too. But um, I just, I just become a golf nut like over the past couple, three years. Um, so, so, do you I, get I out a lot? I, heard, I saw you rocking Notorious Big <laughs> on the golf course the other day. And I do, crazy. man. I get out and hack. I get out and hack. <laughs> I, I struggle. I think my handicap right now is like a twelve. So I, I just, That's I it. get out. And hack. It's yeah. frustrating. You have a couple good holes. You get a birdie every once in a while. It's the best. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I throw my stuff out there on Twitter just because, like, uh, with what we do, we see so many of these guys that are amazing golfers. Um, but I, I like to remind people that there are guys like me out there, you're just average players that just love it. <laughs> so I, exactly. I, I'll throw my bad scores out there, too. Like, I'm not embarrassed by the way that I am. I am the who I am. Sorry. Man, I'm usually not, but, like, I had such a reality check this past weekend. Um, <laughs> I played 36 holes yesterday, so I'm like Ooh. spent. But I yeah. played Saturday also um, oh. and at my club. There were some guys there that uh, that had all played college golf. They're like, man, hey, come hang out, you know, drink some beers, like, like play with us. I'm like, okay, okay. And these dudes just lasered me. I mean, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. They're like hitting irons out there where I'm hitting my driver. Um, yeah. So I, I play with those guys, and I, it, it, it can make your confidence level drop in a hurry when you when you play with guys like that. Right, and then they start giving you advice, and you're just like, "Shut the fuck up!" Oh yeah, oh, you know how it is. Like before the round, they're like, "Oh man, we're not we're not good. We've been drinking all day. Like come out and play with us." And we get out there, and like they're just amazing, amazing. So it, it's just it, it's tough. <clears throat> That's like the one sport I wish I was really good at is golf or like skateboarding. I've thought about that or surfing or something. If I could just like be really good at a sport, that golf would be, oh, yeah. It'd be amazing. Like I would, I would love to be good at golf, <laughs> you know, just <laughs> so good that you can just go out there and, and uh, throw out some kind of crazy number. It's, it, it's so awesome to see those guys do it. Well, are you considering uh, attendance of the DFS open next year? If, if Joe, I is going to run it again. Uh, Joe Joe's awesome. Um, he he reached out to us uh, about last year. It was a little bit late, so I I didn't get to make it. I don't know. It's tough. Um, I, I might might try to go this year though, uh, or next year, whenever we can get it going again. Okay, I got a couple of random stuff things to end the pod with. Um, okay. You're a stat guy. You're kind of a person that looks into the statistics of things. What's your favorite stat? I've been asking people those things. Oh, strokes gained to the green is obviously good. Um, I mean, it's it kind of gives you an overall look of a player's game. Um, strokes gained approach is good, and it, it varies by course. Um, I mean, I, I think a lot of times you have to tailor it to the course. Um, so I would say strokes gained to the green, probably followed by strokes gained approach for me. Okay, that's a good point. The course is important. Do you care about course history? Are you one of those people? You know I do, man. I write a write an article called Horse for the Course. So yeah, it matters. <laughs> Does it lead to answers? Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I definitely think it matters. Um, I mean, I guess there's like a debate about it. Um, and the, the statistics guys will tell you that it doesn't. You can't use the past to predict the future and all that. But uh, at the end of the day, these these guys are human that go out there. And when they go out there, some guys just like courses better than other courses. And, and also, Mental game, Joe. Mental game. And they're and, comfortable at certain places. And confidence breeds – Playing well. Oh, I mean, is important. You know, if you if you go there and you've had a good good history there, um, you're probably feeling a little more confident that week. And for whatever reason it may be, you blocked that course. Uh, I, I don't think there's any doubt that that course history is is important and real. What about betting? Are you a better? Do you bet on golf? I do. I I dabble. Not I'm not a big better, um, but I definitely like to have have a little action going. I like the first round leaders. Those are fun because you can just take some stabs, and and if you hit a couple a year, you're good. Um, so I enjoy those, and it's really weird, like how so many guys play well, like in the first round, uh, even though they might not finish the tournament good. Yeah, and they uh, disappear. Keegan Bradley, shout out Keegs. <laughs> but uh, or even yeah, Ben I, on I style. Yeah, yeah, I do like the bet. It's fun. Do you do any Euro DFS? Yeah. Man, I've tried. Um, it's just so difficult for me. Um, yeah. Maybe because my plate feels full with PGA. Um, yeah. But I feel like I'm starting from scratch. Anytime I dig into Euro, I mean, I, I might know. And I'm, I feel like I know a lot of golfers. And I look at a Euro field sometimes, and I'm like, I know 10 of these guys. Exactly. <laughs> and so that starts a whole research process. <laughs> so right. no, I, I don't. I don't hop into Euro too. Well, what's new and what's next for you, Joe? What are you going to do to finish off this quarantine? Well, man, I'm just really, really excited to get back to golf. Looking forward to it. We we don't have much much further to go. I, I, yesterday, I don't know when this will go up, but yesterday, uh, Rory and DJ and Ricky and Wolf played their thing. Um, and I think it kind of showed everybody that, you know, we can, we can do this. So, I mean, I think oh, yeah. there was some questions uh, about whether we would have golf as soon as it looks like we're going to, but I, I think, I think we're going to, man. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, well, especially to compared to other riding. contact sports. I mean, yeah, no, yeah. Like, I mean, I think it's doable. Um, they're not pushing I mean, each other and snotting on each other. They're 10 feet away when they're putting anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think if it's – and I think the PGA Tour is trying to do it right. Um, they're, they're taking every precaution that they can. Um, but I think it's something that, that, that can be played. I think golf can be played. Um, I think it's the right time to get it going again. Um, so, I'm just really looking forward to that, man. Looking forward All right, to well, so when get, golf here. gets going and they want to read you and they want to follow you, where can they find you, Joe Nicely? Um, they can find me at Joe Nicely on Twitter. Um, you can go to at Roto the fakest Baller name ever. Baller. The fakest <laughs> name, the fakest the- name ever. <laughs> Maybe I need to change it to the real Joe Nicely. Joe so, Meanly, uh, and you can become a, yeah. a troll. Yeah, um, but definitely check out Roto Baller. Um, talk to some of the couple of co-founders, and because of all this stuff that's going on. Um, they have agreed to drop our PGA premium down. It's normally 99 bucks, and they're running it right now for 49 um, So you can go to rotoballer.com, sign up for our PGA premium for 49 which is half price. You can use my promo code NICE and get 10% more off that. So it's 45 bucks for the rest of the year. It's an oh, awesome fuck. deal. Dude, yeah. Yeah. I drink $45 worth of beer a week. You know this. Oh, it's it's definitely worth it, man. We got uh, – That's a whole year's year. worth of Rotoballer at $45? Yeah, for the rest of this year. So, I mean – Who is that? We know how many terms are coming up packed together. So Nice. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's an amazing deal. They, they, Real nice. Yeah, yeah. So, everybody should check it out. Joe Nicely, appreciate you for coming on, dude. I, uh, let's do this again soon, and we'll see you at the DFS Open next February. Man, I hope so. I want to do the DFS Open, and we'll do this again. <laughs> this is my first Or if anything, time. we'll just sponsor holes, because I didn't get to go last year either. So, whatever. I know. I know. Hopefully we can. We'll definitely have a beer if we get to go. That's my. Ma- that's the right attitude. Thank you, Joe Nicely. Talk to you soon. All right, Chad. Thanks, man. Cheers, brother.